I featured these 420 watt amplifiers modules, which um, you can buy on eBay. They're widely available. Everyone's selling them on the last video. And I've had a few questions in about these and um, I've been testing these and I thought I could use them as modules to go into amplifiers that I've got burnt out power amplifiers, like base cabinets that we've got. We could put one of these in, um, force cool it and uh, resurrect the, uh, the speaker box, uh, powered speaker. But it's not as straightforward as I thought, actually. And you can tell from the, these are based on the TDA 895.4TH power amplifier chip. <laughs> And you can see I've been having fun with this one, uh, testing it, trying to get the power that I'm looking for from it. So I thought I'd just make a quick video just to run down on the differences between these two. There's various different layouts, but they're all basically based on the same schematic, with a few minor differences as far as I can make out. The power input is supposed to be 24 volts. This is AC 24 volts. If you connect 24 volts just across those two connections, let's just look at this one for the moment. And zoom in so you can see a bit better there you go you can see it says a ac 24 volts ac and ac well it's got to be a center tapped 24 volts ac so you got 24 volts the center tap and the other 24 volt winding the other end of the winding there then you will get a split rail power supply based on these rectifiers and these two banks of capacitors these ones here instantly this one was broken when i received it it's been clobbered in the box and the cap lead is broken underneath so you need a center tap transform so don't connect just 20 volt 4 volts across there because it'll probably damage it all right you've got a couple of uh, connection points here for mode and standby on this chip there is a, a pin pin 6 which is the mode uh, pin which uh, when it's grounded it's in the standby when you put like 3 volts on it it's in mute mode it's running, but it's muted, minus 8, 70 dBs gain reduction, I think. And then when you um, switch it on full, uh, the voltage on the mode pin goes between 5 and 6 volts. It's running and ready, it's outputting and ready to go. Um, if you run it between 7 and 8 volts, then you've, you enable the self-limiting thermal rollback. And when it gets too hot, it reduces the gain to regulate its maximum temperature on the chip. It's not a good way to run the chip. Because, you know, if you're overdriving it or you've got insufficient cooling, you'd be constantly running the chip at full operating temperature uh, with the rollback operated. So you'll hear differences in volume depending on how hot and what the previous passage of music was like. But anyway, I digress slightly. You've got your music input here. Um, it's a bit worrying. An amplifier of this power from the feed from the preamp, you can see you haven't got differential inputs. You've just got a normal 0 volts and... Uh, left and right. Um, if you haven't got differential inputs, the amount of current that's flowing in this will cause artifacts in, in the output because you will get differential uh, single ended noise due to ground uh, level, you know, um, naught volt variations, okay. So you may ex you can expect a fair bit of hum or noise pickup if you've got any um, issues with you know, interference on the signal. A differential input would have been nicer because these chips are equipped with a differential input. So you might as well use them. So, you know, another two, another two connections there, you could have plus, um, plus left and minus left and uh, plus right and minus right with a signal ground in the middle. So that could be a problem. All power amplifiers have differential inputs because it's the only way to get rid of hum or noise, especially you have very high currents flowing in the transformer and in the environment where this uh, power amplifier is operating okay so anyway so i've blown this up i'll take this off it's a nice heat sink actually but it's not big enough you have to force cool that quite severely you probably get uh, a full output of something like 30 watts of heat being dissipated into this heat sink so it will get very hot quite quickly and if you don't cool it then it'll go into thermal rollback on the chips Anyway, it just pops on with these uh, sprung-loaded uh, barbs, which you just release the barbs and it pops up and there's little springs inside. You can see them in there. Nice heat sink. These modules are about between 20 and 30 pounds, I think. I bought two to see what the differences are. Um, we've got some 1,000 volt, sorry, 1,000 microfarad, 50 volt Nichicon capacitors. Nichicon? What brand are they? Yeah, Nichicon. You can see it now see it down there 
Uh, but these aren't genuine Nichicon. These are fake Nichicon. All the Nichicons I've ever seen I bought from a proper electronics uh, distributor. The printing is pristine. This is pre-shrunk. This is printed on the shrink and then uh, shrunk on, whereas the Nichicon ones are printed on the shrunk capacitors, if you sort of mean. They, this is all wobbling all over the place. So these aren't genuine Nichicon. And they're the 12mm by 25mm 1000 microfarad 50 volt, which is pretty small for uh, that kind of uh, capacitance at that voltage. So it tells me that they've probably got crap ESR as well. So, you know, an amplifier like this would normally have something like three to 6,000 microfarads on each rail, right? So if you're gonna run one of these, get some decent capacitors and strap them in with some very stout wires into the actual power planes of this board, all right? Now, Anyway, so I've cut the mutant standby, there's the rectifiers, there's the power supplies, there's was the chips I've blown up several times. I ran it for a while and then turned the power up and lift the power up and um, I don't think they've got the thermal rollback enabled in the chip actually. We can check by checking that uh, mode voltage on pin 6. This is a series um, initial follower, it's just a 5 volt regulator or a 10 volt regulator to give a reference voltage for pin 6 for the, uh, the mode control. Yeah, so in the data sheet for these chips, uh, it says that they're good for in a mono bridge tied load configuration, which this is, you've got tamplifiers driving into the same speaker in a bridge formation. So you get, to, in theory, twice the power, but it only works into an eight ohm speaker. So the speakers to get the power output from this, you need to connect our have to be eight ohm impedance speakers. You can't really use it with four in the configuration this is in at the moment. But at 41 volts, plus or minus 41 volts, it says 420 watts. And uh, looking at the curve at uh, 33 volts, which is what we get if we put 24 in here, we get roughly a 33 volt power supply. At 33 volts in this configuration, it should be good for about 300 watts, right? So each chip should be able to drop, drive 300 watts into 8 ohms. Uh, they've called it a 420 uh, 420 watts because in the stereos in the single ended stereo configuration where each amplifier is driving a 4 ohm speaker then you can get um, 210 watts so with then 2 times 210 would be 420 which is what they're stating but in theory in this configuration it should be able to deliver about um, 300 watts per side <laughs> it won't for other reasons, but um, yeah, so it kind of spec'd it wrong. Yeah, that's interesting. So that they've actually spec'd it wrong. It's actually more like a 600 watt amplifier RMS two times 300, because these at full supply voltage of 420 watts at 33 volts, which is what we've got here, plus or minus 33 volts, we're getting 150 watt per side. So that will be 300 watts. So 300 plus 300. So potentially. It could be quite a beefy thing, but there's lots of reasons why it's not. So after you've put your decent transformer in, which is going to cost you a packet, a, a, a 600 watt transformer, 24024, it's probably going to cost you a hundred dollars or 70 or 80 pounds, I should think, if you can find one. Probably better to try and salvage one from an old amplifier. So that gives us 33. We're driving through here. Capacitors are probably crap. You're going to have to put some decent caps. You know, two more banks of. Uh, proper capacitance in with decent low ASR capacitors. And then we get into the actual design of the board itself. And on this one, I've been trying it out at 220 watts. And these little vias which stitch that power rail, oddly ordered uh, chips, pin one's there, so it counts backwards. One, two, three, four, that's 12, that's 13, that's 24. You think normally it's the other way around, you go up and along, but it's not, strange. But anyway, those vials have blown open, so they've got two pretty little vials pulling you know, 8 to 10 amps out of the power supply through those, and it's, it's gone open circuit on that track and blew this chip up. That's what blew that one up. Then I took this one off because I was only driving one channel, and it all got pretty messy after that. Now, I can just draw your attention to a few things if you're going to use one of these. Obviously, use the right power transformer. You can see these caps up here. There in the filter, the main prime output filter, the first order filter for the uh, to filter out the TWM switching spikes and to, to sync them the signal together so it uh, doesn't go off down your speaker, it improves your sound quality. 
Now these two caps, they're okay, they're 22 ohm resistors, but these are too small. These are too small. I know it's on the other module, they're bigger, but you really need to, what I'm going to do is to take these off and put a drill through there and there and there and there and then put a polyester capacitor on and it'll have to be on the back of the board because these are up against the heat sink so you've only got limited headroom between there and there so yeah replace these caps c35 and c25 on this board with you know some decent 470 nanofarad capacitors so yeah these these won't last in those positions they just <laughs> i can't take it uh yeah so some decent polyester 470 nanofarad capacitors to replace those with wired underneath the board for short leads on. Now the, the final thing is these chokes are way, way too small really. I could see when I was driving it really hard, you could see a lot of the uh, PWM noise was coming through and these were saturating. So they're not big enough. If I give you an example of another, here's an amplifier that uses the same chip and you can see these are the proper high frequency ferrite, you know, really high saturation current compared to these these are cheap as chips these are quite expensive so um they're gonna be i think um what value are they yeah they're, they're they are 22 micro henry chokes okay so i think i would get some bigger chokes and bigger and better chokes and put on this if i was running this because they're too small and normally you would have a differential filter a common mode rejection filter in the in the lines lines as well to reject some of the common mode noise coming down the line and that's to really reduce the um, currents flowing in your speak that you can't really hear and to make it sound better but maybe also probably because of the rate that this is switching that EMC emissions from the actual speaker leads themselves on the speaker cone if you didn't have a an RF choke common mode rejection choke in in the wires and all the amplifiers I've seen have got the uh, the uh, dual mode choke is this one, for example, there's the dual mode choke for the speaker output. These are the actual filters for the uh, PWM drive filters. And you can see actually on here, look, so they've used polyester capacitors in those positions as well. And I recommend that you do that if you're going to use one of these and you want it to last. OK, uh, so, yeah, that really, that's it, really. You've got your speaker goes across there. It has to be an 8 ohm speaker. You can't put 4 ohm speakers on it. You could, but you wouldn't get peak power out and it wouldn't be good you have higher currents flowing trying to get the same power and this board isn't really wired you know it's got fairly thin power tracks considering at 300 watts or even you know 220 watts you'd be you'd be talking about six or seven amps of uh, rms current going through into this device right and um this this really isn't tracked up for it so you know 80 watts would be comfortable i think i was Tressing it out as it came. Change those two caps there for some decent ones. If you look on the other amplifier, which is a similar thing, basically virtually the same, you've got um, even smaller capacitors in these positions. Tiny ones. I mean, that's terrible. This, uh, this module was cheaper than that one. Yeah, but that's terrible. <clears throat> so, yeah, you've got to put some decent polyester caps in that one, that one, and that one. Okay, those three drill holes, bring the wire through from the other board and solder them on the pads. Okay, so that's my advice. But, you know, lower power levels, 40, 50 watts, you know, there's plenty of power for most people. It's actually quite a good module. Should, in theory, give you, I think, at um, something like 4 watts, lower power levels, it does give a lot of THD. You're talking about this being a 10% THD amplifier, THD plus noise. Yeah, so it's not high fidelity when you drive it hard it becomes um because the signals are so much stronger the uh total harmonic distortion can go down but the data sheet is online i'll um you can have a look at the chip and uh see for yourself but yeah that's what a populated one that looks like that hasn't been blown up yet but these caps are so small i didn't bother trying it but a uh, bigger 40 470 nanofarad 50 volt 63 volt capacitors here so there's less capacitance, but uh, higher vol high voltage ones, but they do seem to be a higher volume capacitor, so they've probably got lower ESR. All right. So there it is. Take it or leave it. I'm not sure if I'm going to pursue it or not. I might just um, do those mods and then run this one up again and see how it gets on. 
Just thought I'd show you the data sheet for the TDA-8954. Now obsolete, as I say. But you can see it's it's billed as a 2 times 210 watt class D power amplifier. That'd be 2 times 210, that'd be left and right, twin channel, 210 watts each channel, RMS, into a 4 ohm speaker. 2009, so it's been in production for over 10 years before it went out. Sure. Anyway, there's an overview of this. Um, some of the salient points. Wild supply voltage, so you can run it from plus 12.5 12 to plus 42.5, but obviously the amount of power you'll get out will be much less on the lower voltages. Thermal fold back warning pin, i.e. I'm folding back so I'm too hot, and an overcurrent flagging pin. They're just two open collector outputs which pull the... You put a tie up to the positive rail or to your 5 volt rail for your micro, and when you pull low you know that these conditions exist. And the modules we've just been looking at, single-ended. So this is bridge mono, gives 1 times 420 watts, so one channel of 420 watts out of one chip. So both amplifiers working as part of a bridge into 8 ohms. That's where you need to have an 8 ohm speaker for this thing. You can't use this really with a 4 ohm speaker. But these, the top three, are the stereo two channels, single-end outputs. And you can see... The, the single N output at 39 volts gives you 235 watts. But anyway, if, I hope you found it interesting if you're buying one of these modules. It might give you a bit of a an idea what to expect. But running at 70, 80 watts a channel into 8 ohms be fine, I should think. Above that, <coughs> you might start to have troubles if you really try and go for the type of rating they've got. You need quite a, few, a bit more um, beefier components around here and better quality components and filters and things. All right, so anyway, subscribe if you're not. Hit the titty button down there and leave me a like. I appreciate it. Thanks.